My friends, I'm with Mark today. You can tell what we're standing in front of and we're gonna have a conversation about horizontal milling and automation, but there's something towards the end of this that you may not have ever heard before, probably the most important thing in this interview, but we have to get to the foundation first, horizontal machining, moving into automation, and then a special surprise for you guys. Mark, let's first talk about horizontal. I've already promised them, so we have to, but let's first talk about it. The coolant flush, the chips falling, the better finish, the longer tool life, the importance of being able to get jobs done, rotate them out into automation, but that's secondary for now. Horizontal machining in general, why would someone lead three axis, five axis, horizontal, why horizontal? So horizontal a lot of times allows you to do uh, fixturing, like specifically with the pallets, you can do four-sided tombstones. You can get a whole lot more parts for uh, one setup rather than having to, like with a vertical, you may have two or three vices in the machine uh, where you're only gonna get that one setup. The other part of that is too, with like the B-axis, you can turn that uh, pallet, get different angles, different holes, different cuts, um, and not just be straight on. So that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's some of the advantages that you get. Yeah, great explanation. Honestly, when I think about what you just described, I'm thinking, okay, let me get the whole thing done and maybe mill off that, that backside at the end. Maybe sure. I gotta punch a hole or something, but you're right. In combination with maybe getting it done faster because we're not recutting chips, our tool life lasts longer. That's important when people are investing yep. six figures to a million dollars a year in tooling. But now we've gotten here. Now we know why we're using horizontal. Let's get into automation. Sure. And when we think automation, Mark, I always think about this constant buzz that's going on right now and this excitement about reshoring, bringing it all back or yep. as much as we can. But then I hear the other buzzword that we're a little scared of, which is a skills gap and a labor shortage. Right. How do we get that high mix, low volume, full automation, nights and weekends, into our system where we can confidently machine everything and do that walk away, uh, walk, walk away time, which is so important, and keep those chips going. Sure, but with the system that we've got here, the, the LPS, behind us is the LPS 5000. Um, it allows you to do everything from uh, reduce your man hours, because you've got 12 pallets on this system. You have 12 pallets, you've got one spindle, or with this system, you can add more uh, racks to the system, you can add more machines, um, and then I've still just got one operator. And then I've got my software doing all of my work for me. It keeps up with my production numbers. It keeps up with my downtime. Um, it keeps up with my, if I have any alarms, it'll, you know, it'll tell me if I've got an alarm. It, all of those things that used to be the human interaction side has gone more to the automation side. And you talk about the skills gap, um, it takes having to have one operator for every machine. I can put four machines on the system and then have one operator. So that's what we've seen, especially in the last three or four years, is where even smaller job shops um, have gotten to where they are going for more of an automation just because of the lack of, of manpower that we've got and the skills gap that we have in the CNC world. So it, with the automation side of the LPS system, with the horizontal, it really brings a lot of things together uh, where you can get that higher production if you've got the low mix, high volume. Whichever way you've got it going on in your shop, our system can, can handle that with no issue. Yeah, and a couple of things I wanna bring up based on that. For you out there, we bring up a lot of the high mix, low volume because when we think automation, some folks out there are still going, I need a million parts or I need 100,000 parts. Sure. So we highlight the high mix. But if you have a whole bunch of stuff and you want to automate, you can obviously still do that as well. The other part I want to bring up is that there's sometimes a fear about robots, cobots, automation taking jobs. We already heard Mark say it. It's true across the board. That skills gap, labor shortage, it exists. And that allows that one person now to make more money, to do more things, because they're making the company more money, because there's also that argument out there that I want to get into machining, but I want to make more money. Well, this is how you do it. This is how you do more. Now, let's get into what else I promised you, that third thing, that, that, that secret sauce that I didn't actually let out, Mark, I love this part, I really do. We've talked about horizontal machining, we've talked about automation. Now let's talk about the digital side of things, which in my opinion is the evolution of how shops thrive right now. Understanding 
what the uptime is, what the downtime is, what the setup time is, and not just that, if I break something, crash something, make a mistake, you got it all handled within this system. I want to learn more, they want to learn more. Tell me what's built into the DN Solutions digital side. Sure, so the DPMS software um, covers everything from your tool life, um, your production time, your downtime. Um, it will, you've got remote monitoring, so you can be away from the shop, uh, you could be on a boat somewhere and log in and look and see what's my machine doing? Um, are my guys working? Uh, have they taken a 30 minute break when it was supposed to be a 10 minute break? You can see all that in the software. Um, the, the great thing too is, is uh, like I said, with the tools, with the, with, the, uh, with the machine, you can see how much tool life you've got left. From this system here, what's left on the machine? Do I have enough tool life? Um, do I need to put more tools on before I leave for the weekend? All of that stuff is available in the, in the DPMS software from DN Solutions. I'm gonna take a quick break right sure. here just together so we can fantasy, have a fantasy about this being on a boat thing. <laughs> oh, I can see it now, okay. I actually, have a, now. I actually have a customer that does that. I believe you, I believe you. <laughs> Something else I wanna bring up because I find this fascinating is now that we've gotten off of our boat. Yep. Let's talk about redundant tooling or sister tooling or a family of tooling, which I think is incredibly important because a lot of us are now running those super alloys that are out there that sometimes break our tools. And if we don't really pay attention to the wear that's being put on our cutting tools right now, Absolutely. or if we get a little bit out of imbalance, what your system does, because it's educated and knowledgeable and reads that when it comes to sister tooling or redundant tooling, let's talk about that and how it fixes. Sure. So. Uh, exclusive to DN Solutions, we've got eight digit tool software that resides on the machine. And what it allows uh, our customers to do is they can have uh, five tools of the same tool. And let's say that uh, they're running a part, they're running it in lights out mode where it's unmanned, it doesn't require a human being to be in front of it. Um, it breaks a tool. The machine will tell the software, hey, I broke a tool. It'll kick the pallet out. It'll put the pallet away, it'll turn it a different color so that when uh, the operator comes in the next morning, they can say, hey, my pallet's no good, why? Um, but the great thing is, is that because we have redundant tooling and we have the software, the second tool or the third tool that's good, that's, that's, you know, that's a, a good tool, that tool will run with the next good pallet and your production keeps getting made even though you broke that first tool. So then, you know, then it still requires that operator interaction. He's gonna come in the next morning, look at his part, say, hey, it broke, but I can save this part. He's gonna change out his tool, and he's gonna go about the rest of his day. Um, the same thing, you break a tool, uh, it'll, it'll get an alarm. The system will send that alert to you while you're sitting on the boat and, uh, and tell you, hey, you broke a tool, you've got a pallet that's, that's, you know, needs to be reviewed tomorrow or whenever you come in and it's just gonna keep running production. So you don't lose the production just because you broke one. Very, very well said. Extremely informative for the folks out there. Sure. You're making me miss Jimmy Buffett a little bit though because I'm now sitting on a boat listening to Jimmy Buffett. It'll mess with you and, in the shop. It'll mess with you. It'll mess with now you. Now let's play, if it's okay with you, let's do a little role playing, sure. just for fun. Sure. And this is the last bit for you guys out there because I wanna put a perspective for you of what some of you I know for a fact are going through right now, because how many of you have clients and customers out there that need a job yesterday? And it can be frustrating, right? You have to break everything down, put everything back. So I'm gonna do a little role playing. Mark, I am that customer, which I'm not gonna take aside and say I'm good or bad or frustrated, wink, wink. wink. Uh, but I am that customer that calls you. And I do it semi-regularly and say, look, Mark, hey, I got a job I needed yesterday. You've always helped me out before. You give me great service but I need it quickly. I've heard rumors out there about setting up a pallet change system where you're prepped and ready for hot jobs that come through to make sure that everyone is taken care of and it takes some of that frustration off the table. Sure. Yeah, so the great thing about, I think everybody thinks, well, for me to have a pallet system, I need to have a big high run of production or you know, I need to be making 100,000 parts a year. It's just simply not true. So the great thing about that is, let's say that you, my customer, has six pallets that are running my production, but that customer that's a little annoying or he always needs it yesterday, he needs it right now, uh, I'll just take my last pallet, put your fixtures on it that you're always bugging me about, I'll put those on there, 
When you call me, I'm gonna say, hey, Tony, listen, I'm gonna have to break my machine down or I'm really gonna have to stop my production, and, but I'll get you your parts. And I'm gonna hang up the phone. I'm gonna call that pallet down here. I'm gonna put your parts on there. I'm gonna put it in my production run ahead of everything else. It's gonna get run next. I'm gonna call you tomorrow. I'm gonna say, hey, Tony, I got your parts ready. We, we worked really hard all night and bring your checkbook with you. Yeah, um, that's right. I, it's gonna cost you. But in, in effect, it didn't cost me a whole lot of anything other than just putting it in my production line. It cost me some time. Some forward thinking. It cost some forward thinking, but man, uh, and I may or may not have a customer that does that. Yeah, I, I've seen it a hundred times. And we all want the hot jobs because it helps people. And it also may be a little bit financial rewarding, depending on how bad or, or not that, that breakdown is. Breakdown is set up, that's when we lose a lot of our money. So a cell like this allows you to do all the work while that one's still spinning, making money. Mark, you've done an amazing job today. Thank you so Thank much you for so your much, time. Tony. I, I hope you and I get to do this a lot more because you make my job so easy. <laughs> Thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon. Have any questions or comments, leave it in the comments section. We're happy to answer. Mark's always ready. And as you can tell, he's a brilliant guy. So we'll see you then.